Rahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. I am your teacher Professor Zakia Pasi from Sir Sayyid Government Girls College. Today we will study the poem Lucy Gray by William Wordsworth. This poem is taken from part 1 of your book Selections from English Verse. Introduction of the Poet William Wordsworth was born in 1770 and he died in 1850. Wordsworth, popularly known as the Poet of Nature, was the major English Romantic poet. A focus on simple, obscure people, use of everyday language, and an emphasis on nature are three main features of Wordsworth's poems. Wordsworth wrote many of his greatest poems while he stayed with his sister Dorothy close to Coleridge. Lyrical Ballads, the book of poetry that he produced with Samuel Taylor Coleridge in 1798 is usually credited as the beginning of the romantic movement in English literature. For Wordsworth, poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. It takes its origin from emotions recollected in tranquility. For his poetic genius, he was honoured with the title of the Poet Laureate in 1843, which he held till his death in 1850. The Prelude is considered as his masterpiece, which was published posthumously. His other famous works are Daffodils, Lines, written a few miles above Tintin Abbey, Ode, Intimations of Immortality from Recollections of Early Childhood, and Poems in Two Volumes. Introduction of the Poem Lucy Gray is a poem published in the second edition of the Lyrical Ballads in 1799. It is not one of the Lucy poems written by Wordsworth. This poem was based on a real-life incident that he heard from his sister Dorothy. It relates the incident of an abused little cottage girl, of an obscure little cottage girl who went out one evening into the snowstorm and never returned, but whose spirit is later seen by other cottages dancing on the moors. The poet has portrayed Lucy Gray as a child of nature. The poem is written lyrically and brings the picture of the valley and the countryside into our mind as we read. The tragic tone of the poem leaves a lasting impression in the mind of the reader. This poem is a southern ballad written in easy flowing quatrains. Now we will study the poem Stanza Wise. The death of a child is a common theme throughout William Wordsworth's poetry, such as Lucy Gray. Wordsworth suffered the loss of his own son and daughter, and those deaths seem to forever haunt him. His works of poetry are filled with the themes of death. Sometimes he finds comfort in thoughts of the afterlife. Throughout his poetry, the name Lucy nearly always refers to one he loved and lost. This particular poem, Lucy Gray, was written some time after his other Lucy poems and is not often grouped with them. Stanza 1 Oft I heard, oft I had heard of Lucy Gray, and when I crossed the wild, I chanced to see at break of day the solitary child. In this stanza, the poet gives us the setting and the foreshadowing for the rest of the poem. The reader knows that the poet has often heard before about Lucy Gray. The poet then claims that he saw the solitary lonely child right at break of day. At this point, the poet does not reveal why he has heard of Lucy Gray, nor does he reveal why seeing her is worth mentioning. The first stanza simply strikes up curiosity about Lucy and sets her up as an important figure. Stanza 2 
no mate no comrade lucy knew she dwelt on a wide moor the sweetest thing that ever grew beside a human door in the second stanza the poet creates curiosity about lucy the poet says that she has no mate no comrade no friend this corresponds with his description of her in the previous stanza as a solitary child then he says that she dwelt on a wide moor it is a strange thing to imagine a child with no friends or family alone and living outside one might begin to think that he is describing some kind of wild child but line 3 of this stanza contradicts that idea entirely the poet says that she is the sweetest thing that ever grew beside a human door now you can understand that lucy is a sweet darling child the last line says that she grew beside a human door it seems strange that she did not grow inside that door since she is a human child the speaker or the poet has already mentioned that she dwelt among the moor these two descriptions cause the readers to wonder about lucy and her strange identity stanza number 3 you yet may spy the fawn at play the hare upon the green but the sweet face of lucy gray will never more be seen here in this stanza the poet talks directly to the readers and says that they may spy what is the meaning of spy spy means to see someone without being seen so he says that they may spy the fawn at play and that they may catch a sight of a hare upon the green but that the sweet face of lucy gray will never more be seen with this stanza the speaker reveals that something has happened to lucy stanza 4 Tonight will be a stormy night. You two to the town must go, and take a lantern, child, to light your mother through the snow. The quotation marks here indicate that the speaker is now telling a story. This perhaps is a story he has heard from another person. the poet begins to talk from another's point of view this person apparently set the child out in the snow with a lantern to find a sh- and show way to her mother stanza 5 that father will i gladly do this is scarcely afternoon the minster clock has just struck 2 and yonder is the moon the speaker has already described lucy as the sweetest thing so it does not come as a surprise that she should respond that father will i gladly do mean he is willing to go he is obedient child this also reveals that the poet within the quotes that the speaker within the quotes is lucy's father this scarcely afternoon means it is hardly afternoon the minster clock minster clock means the clock of the church yonder is the moon means the moon is seen earlier which was believed to be a sign of a storm the father sends his daughter out and Two o'clock in the afternoon, and Lucy gladly goes to show light to her mother. Stanza number six. At this, the father raised his hook and snapped a faggot band. He plied his work, 
and Lucy took the lantern in her hand. This stanza continues the story from the original speaker's point of view. He says, or the poet says, that the father returned to his work as Lucy went out with the lantern in her hand. Stanza number seven. Not blither is the mountain row with many a wanton stroke. Her feet disperse the powdery snow that rises up like smoke. This stanza describes Lucy as walking along slowly and carelessly, kicking up the powdery snow as she walks and watching it rise like smoke. These descriptions of Lucy help to continue to paint a picture of a sweet and innocent child. The more the reader gets to know Lucy, the more he feels anxious about her, because the speaker has previously stated that she is to be seen no more. The image of a little girl doing as her father asked, kicking up the snow as she walks, serves to attach the readers to Lucy. Lucy. Stanza 8. The storm came on before its time. She wandered up and down, and many a hill did Lucy climb, but never reached the town. With the first line of this stanza, the poet reveals what will happen to Lucy. The storm came on before his time, and Lucy wandered up and down and climbed many a hill, but never reached the town. With this description, you can imagine poor Lu little Lucy lost in the storm and climbing hill after hill only to be lost in the storm. Stanza number 9. The wretched parent saw that night when shouting far and wide, but there was neither sound nor sight to serve them for a guide. In this stanza, the poet reveals that at some point during the night, Lucy's mother returned home. When her parents realized that Lucy had never made it to the town with the lantern, they were wretched all that night, as any parents would, would be as they frantically searched for their child. They went shouting far and wide, but found nothing in the darkness and silence of the night. Stanza number 10 At daybreak on a hill they stood that overlooked the moor, and thence they saw the bridge of wood a furlong from their door. Again, the poet mentions daybreak. This is a significant time in the poem. This is the time of the day when the speaker mentions having seen Lucy Gray. This is also the time of the day when the parents realize, realize that Lucy has probably not made it through the winter storm. Stanza number 11 They wept and turning homeward cried In heaven we all shall meet when in the snow the mother spied the print of Lucy's feet. At this point the parents weep and give up their search for Lucy. They turn home and cling to the hope that they would meet with their daughter again in heaven. At that moment, the mother spied the print of Lucy's feet. She has been all night in the storm. L Lucy is not likely to have survived. However, the sight of her footprint gives hope to the wretched parents. Stanza number 12 Then downwards from the steep hill's edge, they track the footmarks small, and through the broken hawthorn hedge and by the long stone wall. 
With this, the parents begins to follow her footprints. They see that she walked through the broken hawthorn hedge and by the long stone wall. With hope in their hearts, they continue to follow her footsteps. By now, the reader is likely fully sympathizing with the parents. The feeling of frantically searching, the weeping and accepting her death and the renewed hope at seeing her footsteps are all feelings the readers can either relate to or at least imagine. Stanza number 13 And then an open field they crossed, the marks were still the same, they tracked them on nor ever lost, and to the bridge they came. The parents track her prints, footprints all the way across the field and to a bridge. The readers can imagine the way the parents must be feeling as they followed their daughter's footprints and were forced to imagine her trudging through the snowstorm, lost and afraid. Stanza 14 they, follow from the, they followed from the snowy bank, those footmarks one by one, into the middle of the plank, and further there were none. This stanza invokes the feelings of intense loss. While the parents follow the footsteps of the child, there is hope that she might be found alive at the end of those footprints. Instead, the prints led the parents to the middle of the plank on the bridge and suddenly the footprints stop. The only conclusion is that Lucy fell off the bridge stands of 15. Yet some maintain that to this day she is a living child, that you may see sweet Lucy Gray upon the lonesome wild. In this stanza, the poet tells us that the body of little Lucy was never found. Had it been found, people would not continue to claim that she is a living child. But they do, and furthermore, they claim that she can still be seen upon the lonesome wild. This suggests that it is the spirit of the Lucy that is alive and can still be seen. This also gives more insight into the opening stanzas in which the poet claims that he saw her and that she was a solitary child. It was the spirit of Lucy Gray which he had often heard of and which he claims to have seen. The stanza number 16 Over rough and smooth she trips along and never looks behind and sings a solitary song that whistles in the wind. The poet repeats again that he has seen Lucy Gray and he describes her as she is now. He says that she trips along and never looks behind as she sings a solitary song. This gives a peaceful description of Lucy and implies that she perhaps sang and skipped along before the storm took her way. It suggests that she was not terrified by the storm, but she was taken suddenly and by surprise. Essentially, it suggests that she died happy, escaping along in the snow. This, of course, would be what the parents would have desperately hoped for. After realizing that their daughter was not alive, the story perpetrated about Lucy Gray suggests, suggests that if her spirit lives on, it is the happy spirit of a lively young child escaping along through the snow. Now the important questions. Why is Lucy Gray believed to be a living child after her death? Why did people think that Lucy is a living child or what is the common belief of the people about Lucy Gray? Answer Lucy Gray is a famous poem of William Wordsworth. 
In this poem, the poet depicts the sad incident of Lucy Gray's death. A lonely girl who lived in the house in a valley with her parents. The poem narrates that Lucy Gray was with her father at home. Her mother had gone to town. Her father asked her to take the lantern and bring home her mother safely before evening as there were signs of an impending storm. But Lucy lost her way in the storm and never returned. Towards the end of the poem, the poet tells us that the people believe that Lucy exists not in the family but in the arms of nature and sings a solitary song which resonates in the lonesome wild. Wordsworth describes the legend Lucy has left behind as some believe that she is still out there wandering in the woods, singing a lonely song that seems like a whistle in the wind. That's why Lucy Gray is still believed by people to be a living child after her death. And the common belief is that she lives as a part of nature and her solitary song is heard in the winds which echoes from the mountains. Question number two. How did Lucy Gray meet with a tragedy? Or what happened to Lucy Gray on her way to the town? Or how did Lucy's parents come to know of her tragic death? Or what happened to Lucy Gray in the poem titled Lucy Gray? The answer of all these uh, four questions is The poem Lucy Gray by William Wordsworth narrates the sad incident of Lucy Gray's death. Lucy Gray was with her father at home. Her mother had gone to town. Her father asked her to take the lantern and bring home her mother safely before evening as there were signs of an impending storm. She leaves for town but gets caught in the storm and loses her way. However, her mother reaches home alone and the worried parents search the entire valley for Lucy till night, but she is not found. The next morning they search near a bridge which is not very far away from their house and finally see the small footprints of their daughter. They trace the trail of Lucy's footsteps which lead them to the middle of a little bridge after which the foot footprints disappeared and they conclude that she must have fallen in the crevice and died. But it is believed that a solitary song is heard in the winds which echo, which echoes from the mountains. While some think that she died, while some think that she died on the day of the storm, others say that she lives as part of nature. Important MCQs. Wordsworth believes that Lucy Gray has become part of nature. Lucy Gray is a ballad. In the snow, Lucy Gray's mother saw her footprints. So I hope students, you will like this lecture and it will be beneficial for you. Thank you so much.